is uh, Captain Unusual, and I'm here with the Deviant Historian at the Ellis Boat Harbor in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And we're just going to give you a walkthrough of this interesting and kind of hidden gem of Cedar Rapids. And uh, we're going we're gonna to narrate this video for you and kind of... Go to that first one there real quick. So that one used to have three. That's like the Cadillac of the houseboats there. They have three slots. Each of those slots rents for $600 a year. So it's actually pretty affordable. But from my memory, after the flood, that guy had three. I don't know if he sold off the third one, did it need it anymore, or what all happened to it. But that one's there. So that's a houseboat, and then there's a boat ship. There's a boat, those are boat houses, and then he has a houseboat. Is that a pontoon boat? Because I always get the wording confused. There's houseboats and boat houses and all that. And actually, let's look over at this sign real quick, see the marking? I think that that 5463W correlates to something. Otherwise, it's just kind of an interesting and unique marking. But you kind of see the house numbers there. That's just 21, what's that, 86 for the first one that we're looking at? And then 21, 20, yeah, I don't have my glasses on. 23, 97. And these, most of these were brand new after the flood. So. Yeah, during the flood of, of, uh, of 08, uh, these, uh, the, the, the boat houses were pretty much all washed uh, downstream and all kind of ended up in this giant pile. It was it was pretty shitty. By the railroad bridge by Quaker Oak. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's really cool because far from every city in the, in the world has a community like this. And even, I would say, even most river towns don't ha have a community like this. So it's... It's really cool that we have this in uh, in Cedar Rapids. Birdhouse. Bird, oh yeah, birdhouse. Yeah. Birdhouse, kind of garbage removal access right away there. It looks like they connect with utility things. A lot of these have either a dish or an over-the-air antenna. I don't think they have internet. Now look at that Patriots home there with the three American flags. The yeah. We will survive mentality and kind of the angle of that roof, the metal roof. And then he has his pontoon boat underneath. Yeah, it's like corrugated metal. It's pretty cool setup there. Nice digs. But yeah, then, but it's just cool that we have such a variety of, of places to live. You could live on the river if you wanted to. Now, with these houses, they're not the kind that you could actually, I mean. You, you could live in them three fourths of the year. They're not the best, but you could probably make it work. Yeah. And you probably, they can't be piloted, right? They don't have any... No, nope, these are stationary. No these motors, no... I don't even think they have a bathroom. Either. But it's kind of cool to see some of these kind of smaller little ones like this here. Um, then there's double-deckers, and they're really kind of aesthetic. They really allow the individual to personalize it. If you look at a lot of the cookie-cutter houses in the suburbs, this is kind of the opposite of that. This is all... These aren't retarded tiny homes where you... You know, you got like a toilet and you sleep in that, you know, your, your portage Johnny. This is actually a legitimate facility. You know, not that crap on HGTV. And look at that one there. I don't know what the hell happened to that, but it, it looks like it was a home improvement project gone wrong or something. Yeah. Yeah, something went wrong there. One thing I noticed, it's kind of interesting, is the... The, the, the fact that a lot of them are using barrels for the buoyancy there, like bar bar barrels under the panels, it's it's kind of an interesting kind of makeshift thing. Because, like, I mean, I, I guess maybe it's common practice, but it looks like kind of a... We can go closer and kind of look at it up close, too. And, I mean, personally, I... See, I, I grew up on a farm, and basically, like, my family's livelihood is in land... So, I do find this style of living kind of confusing, <laughs> in a way, but it's kind of cool. I mean, I don't have to understand it to still think that it's kind of a, that it's a cool thing. Like, that it's kind of a cool thing, to, it's a thing to, an interesting thing to do. Remnants of the dock, kind of that paint shag, not really shag part, but it looks like old school part right there. This right here, we are on the edge of the Cedar River, right here, basically. And then the flatness of the roofs. When we were there, you can see the angle. That blue one's really a sharp angle. They're either really sharp or they're really flat. Not a lot of in-between. So that 
that's a different style. Then then they have some time them together. That little blue one, this blue one, I think was close to one. This here, it even has the Burmark security sticker on the door. This other one, twenty four thirty nine, I'm pretty sure was three. This is like classic style. This is what I remember growing up. Yeah, it's like, almost more like a shed kind of. Well, a shed, a shack. It was very minimal, very. Yeah, kind of, kind of more uh, for somebody who just wants shed. somewhere to hang out, like maybe bef immediately before or after they go fishing or something. Yeah. Yeah, the, these are cool. I mean, like I said, I, I don't relate to it at all, but it's it's interesting. I mean, it's I appreciate the individuality of. Uh, oh, that bird, the bird. Yeah. They also had a porch out front on the other side of that where they had a grill and all that. And my family used to drive by here um, after we would eat at the Village Inn at the Best Western, which is unfortunately about to be torn down. Um, and the, the Village Inn was eventually replaced with a Cooper's Mill, which we also uh, would eat at uh, every so often. But uh, we would pass by here. And I remember this being a fairly active place. I mean, you would see, like, girls in bikinis. You'd see, like, people hanging out and boating and fishing and stuff. And you probably still see that. It's, it's kind of a rainy day. So, you know, it's not exactly the day to be seeing a lot, of, a lot of people out and about. This is but. actually for sale. This is two docks. These docks, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but they're $600 uh, per dock fee per year. Oh, well, there's a the marking. Some marking in the concrete. Look down there. Cortez, seven one seventy six. So forty years ago. Talk about marking your territory. <laughs> and I don't think I've actually ever been down here, like like right up up close in person. Up close. Yeah, you don't want to fall into the river. Yeah. Got a, got a, ooh, look at the ducks. There's some ducks. That's cool. You're really kind of close with nature with this. And I would bet the ducks around here are probably fairly tame because they encounter humans give, all the time. Give them a fun life. So, look at this one. This is kind of cool. It's kind of small, but just how the architecture is with the invitingness of the storage on either side. It's just the design. The next one we're approaching is actually for sale for eighteen thousand dollars. Has a little porch up front, and then it has that. I don't know how many square feet. I guess maybe hundred square feet. It looks like about the size of the The state of Iowa wanted to destroy this community, the DNR did, right after the flood. Luckily, I think Corbett, or uh, Cover was the guy in power as governor, and he was originally from Iowa, Chet Culver. His dad, John Culver, was a senator from Iowa, and had a law firm. I believe they were the ones that really advocated and preserved the property, really let this community come back, grow back, and prosper. But yeah. It's stronger now than it was a year ago. Yeah. To be honest, I would consider Cedar Rapids a, a, a more boring place if this place didn't exist. I mean, like, if you're not going to have a house community here, what are you going to have? It's just a it's just a, a, a big park that, with a river going through it. Double Decker. This, nice. Yeah, Double Decker. This community adds a lot of character to Cedar Rapids. Can't really make it out. Jim Vern. And Bob, Bob and Ed. Low year. Okay. Well, these guys have an open deck up there. Oh yeah. You know another fun another fun thing they do in this area, the Ellis Park area, is uh, don't they do some kind of river racing? Yeah, they'll do river racing, and they have a ski team that's actually going to be down here tomorrow. Yeah, like jet skiing and. Well, this looks like almost a storage unit. 
Yeah. And now the rain fight wants to come back. It's starting to rain, but and neither of us brought jackets, so we'll keep it. We'll keep going. We're gonna soldier on because it's our duty as uh, documentarians. That's almost like a barn, a big yellow barn with a metal roof. And then there's some, uh, what's that, frosted glass cubes above yeah. it, and then the little nautical thing. So there is really kind of a, oh, hey, it's a double decker, it's for sale. It has an air conditioning thing, phone number. This is fairly decent. It's kind yeah. of like a half done project. It's half vinyl, half wood. And this, this area has a very nautical feel to it. Like this neighbor, this entire neighborhood, I always thought had a very sort of nautical feel to it. It felt almost like a coastal like kind of neighborhood, which you have to remember this is in the middle of Iowa, which is in the middle of the <laughs> in the middle of the Midwest. And we're not known for that type of atmosphere. Like we have rivers and, and a, an occasional lake. What but Go down here. Yeah. Kind of oh wow! Imagine sitting on that thing. Look at that. <laughs> you just boom right into the river. I don't know why they do it. People, people, people. If you choose to live in this type of community, it's because you love the water. You embrace it. It's like your mother. <laughs> it's like your. It's like your lover. You. If you fall into the into the water every once in a while, that's all just part of the lifestyle. <laughs> and probably, I would be curious as to like how deep the water is right here at this point at the bank of the river. Like, I mean, this is kind of artificially built, isn't it, this area yeah, here? It's dammed up. It's dammed up, and, and like, I would think that the water at this point, at this, at, in this kind of dammed up area yeah. here is not too deep. So back in the 1950s, this area was actually all called, it wasn't Ellis, it was called the Municipal Golf Course, the Municipal and the municipal uh, park. There weren't all the other parks that are now in Cedar Rapids, or at least that's how this area was marketed more so. And here's the boat ramp here. going to go up or are we going to take the low road? We can take the low road. Maybe I'll maybe I'll just walk up here to kind of show the, the scenery. This is the other side here. As you can see, there are a lot of island uh, islands in this part of the river here. Some natural, some artificial. But this is kind of a part of the river that's uh, that's kind of it's not just a, a straight up river bank to bank. It's it's kind of a I mean it is a river, but it's kind of a low lying area where the water's kind of backed up, and uh, you can see that there's that there's land kind of interrupting the interrupting the river so it's not just a just a, a straight river kind of reminiscent of parts of the Mississippi but yeah if you like water and if you like sort of nautical living this is this is a this is a place to be Lots of boating. You can boat up the river all the way up to the dam. The lock, the lock and dam, uh, is part of the part of the structure that uh, that uh, that creates the I three eighty overpass that goes over downtown and basically around and over downtown in sort of a they call it the S curve. <laughs> And the lock and dam is right under that overpass. It's actually part of the structure itself. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll probably stay up here because there are uh, there are kind of two sides to look at here. You can see the boats on this side, and then the the house boats on this side. 
definitely glad we're making this video. This brings back a lot of memories. You see here's here are the the boats. And this is just a weekday, so it's really not even that busy, but there's still people out here. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a weekday and it's rainy. So it looks like a ghost town, but it's really not. What type of guns right below that guy's American flag is going to protect his sovereignty and his rights? Oh, is that an AR-15 or an M60? Yeah, something like it, I would think. These are kind of cute. These are three. Oh, and he's a Harley Davidson houseboat too. Yeah. Looks like these are just docked for like. Well, and like that boat, that looks like the kind of boat that actually could... Uh, it has a motor on it. It has a motor on it. It's a motor boat. A motor. Yeah, there what happens go. here will be posted on Facebook. Ha 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 Did you see that? The guy had a sign. It said, what happens here will be, will be posted on Facebook. Caution, do not drink water, fish crap in it. No, that guy had a sign that said, what happens here will be posted on Facebook. Yeah. He's close. What, what's actually, it's actually going to be posted on YouTube. <laughs> this is for sale, too. This is kind of a neat one. And then this is for sale as well. The one is 52000 That one white one. This one doesn't list what its price is for sale. That's why it's kind of I mean, if you if you live on the river, there's a good chance that you're the type of person who appreciates your privacy. And so it does make me a little uneasy, but we're not breaking the law. This is this is a public place. There's no sign post. Well, I mean, legally, I mean, if it's a public place, you pretty much have the right to. Uh, as long as you're within, as long as you're on public. Land and your it's within eye shot. It can be it can be filmed. Let's get back up the stairs here. We're probably probably coming to the end of our video, but that's just as well because we're reaching the end of this peninsula here. Yeah. Speaking of which, I could definitely use one of those right now. Yeah, it's kind of nice that they were able to salvage a lot of them. Uh, 
I think a fourth they made to salvage. The rest got crushed at that top, at that bridge before they could make it to the east side. Kind of makes you wonder how much junk is still in the river. <laughs> That one say twenty nine thousand. Uh, it's a phone number. Oh. Old glory has red, white, and blue on the roof. Look at that yellow house. See the yellow one over there? Oh yeah. Yeah, this is definitely the life if you're a certain type of person. They have a friendship tunnel. <laughs> Another one for sale, a double decker. The brown one. Wow, look at look at that thing. Hey, it's CJ, this thing over here. It looks like a car. It looks like a modified car. Yeah, I think it's just a boat, but here, let me get this thing to focus. Yeah, it is a boat. It's just a boat, but it's an old looking one. I would think that that's an old boat. There we go. Definitely has the look of a car. It's almost like a convertible boat. It's like a convertible boat. Another thing that's worth mentioning is you might notice that a lot of people have statues of owls. And I'm guessing that that's to keep the rats away. Because we are on the river and the term river rat definitely refers to something that's, that exists in reality. They, they probably do encounter... Go down and get the American flag and we'll end it there. Yeah. May also be to scare the the bats, but I would I would think that the rats would be the main concern. And I don't know if you can see, but there are boats on the water, motor boats. Oh, look at all the geese over there. Yeah. I'll try to zoom in. There are some motor boats headed toward in the direction of the dam. I don't know, one of, one of the things that, that kind of defines Cedar Rapids, the Cedar River, is the thing that almost destroyed it. But it's all part of being a river town, I guess. Lots of geese. And this is the end of the peninsula up here. You can see um, benches. I would imagine this would be a really cool place to hang out. You're just, you're completely surrounded by the river. Well, on three sides anyway. And you can just sit on these, on these uh, benches and chill out.
Yeah. Yeah, from here you can just kind of just barely see downtown. And you see there are memorials here. This must have been kind of donated by people who loved this area. No fishing beyond this point. Yeah, I'll zoom in and maybe you can kind of see. You can see the part of the skyline there from here. Ooh, and some, some thunder. Not sure, it might have something to do with the dam. There's a little mint memorial in remembrance of late of the late Cedar Boat Club members, nineteen forty eight to nineteen seventy three. Yeah. And this is kind of a nice spot here. You can you get a good view of the of the park there. You can see there the, the hills. There's a pretty high area over there, like uh, there's a pavilion up there. I've been there before for, for, for events and it's kind of a nice area up there. And then on the other side you can see the... We are in the Cedar Valley right now. And uh, I think we'll... I think we'll end it at that. I think we've seen just about everything. Yep. And uh, nature calls. <laughs> so uh, we have to get going. But uh, uh, God bless America, I guess, and the state of Iowa. Our Cedar liberties Rapids. we prize and our rights we will maintain. As the thunder claps in On the background. community that managed to save itself eight years ago. Yep, this is quite the success story. Just goes to show, don't give up on living the, living the type of life you want and maintaining your personal sovereignty. So this is Captain Unusual uh, featuring, and, and also the Deviant Historian, uh, signing off for now.